All right, so last video, we set up our audio hardware to work with Cubase. Now we're going to set up our MIDI stuff to work with Cubase. Here's our project that we left off with. And we were leaving, we left off in the audio connections window. This is where we set all the stuff up to work for our audio interface. And now we're going to go back to that same studio menu tab. And instead of choosing audio connection, we're going to come down here to studio setup. All right, so the first thing we see if we click on the MIDI tab up here, in that folder, let's click on MIDI port setup. And this is going to show us all the available ports or MIDI controllers that we currently have connected. So currently here in the studio, we're using a Yamaha um, Mox F8. But if you're using a different controller, it's going to have that name instead. So for example, if you're using an Oxygen or an Alesis controller or an Amadio or a Studio Logic or whatever, it's going to show up here. This is going to uh, basically show you all the active ports. So once you turn that on, Cubase will auto-detect it and set these ports up for you automatically. If they ever get out of whack for whatever reason, simply hit reset and click on that and it'll reset them back to their default position. So this is a pretty easy way uh, and, and quick and dirty way that Cubase kind of sets it up for you. And you don't have to do a lot here in this one regard. All right, the next tab we want to click on is go down from MIDI port setup and go down to this guy down here, the VST Audio Systems tab. So where we just set up our audio, our audio sound card is going to be in this window here. But if it's not, we want to make sure that it is. We want to click on the little down arrow, and we want to choose our audio sound card to make sure that it's using the right driver. And there's usually more than one to choose from. So make sure it's the one that came with your audio interface. If you're using a Focusrite, make sure it's using the Focusrite driver. All right, so after we're done with that, leave the rest of these settings where they are. They're all pretty much set up for default to act great in most systems. We'll get into more of this later. Right underneath the VST Audio Systems tab is the name of your sound card. If you click on that, it'll show you all the available ins and outs of your sound card, much like we just saw when we were setting up our hardware. And up here is the latency measurement of your hardware. This is really important because latency is the amount of time it takes for you to hit a note on a keyboard controller or on a drum pad controller or a pad controller and have that information travel all the way down the USB cable into your computer and trigger a sound module. If the latency is too high, you're going to notice a lag between the time you hit the note and the time you hear it. So how we control that is this, this little control panel button here. When we click on that, we're going to be able to adjust that latency figure down to the lowest amount that our sound card will support. Now, when I click on this, it's going to bring up our latency control. However, when you click on it, it's going to bring up your actual audio interfaces control. And in that control, somewhere, you will be able to change the buffer size of your latency. So all of those are going to look different. So mine's going to look very different from yours. If you have an M audio interface or a universal audio interface or a Focusrite interface or Allen and Heathrow or whatever, it's all going to look different. So when you click on this control panel, it's going to bring up your audio interface's control panel. And in that control panel, there will be a way for you to change the latency. All right, so these are all the latencies that are available for our sound card. So I can choose 32, but if I do, I'll start getting clicks and pops in the audio stream. And the trick is to find that sweet spot between really low latency and really clean playback. And it's going to be different for every single sound card. So this is where you set that information. So for example, if I set this down to 64 and choose that, I can get really nice low latency. So to give you an example, 4.4 milliseconds of latency is about the speed of a regular MIDI cable. That's pretty fast. That's going to be just about perfect for most applications. However, if I get up here into the 512 category or even higher into like the 1024, now look at this latency. It's at 26 milliseconds. That's audible delay. That's like half a second of delay. That would be completely unusable for almost every kind of soft synth or drum synth out there. We really would prefer this to be under about 7 milliseconds most of the time. So choose the lowest one you can get for nice, clean audio output for the time being. And then we'll tweak it as we go. But that's how we change the latency and set up the MIDI. And in the next video, we're going to start recording some basic tracks so we can see this in play. All right, we'll see you guys in the next video.